Um, first of all, I'd like to thank you for acknowledging the traditional owners of the land we're meeting on today and pay my respect to their elders past, present and emerging. So I'm back in Brisbane, so these are the Turbul and Yagara peoples. So today, Anthony and I are going to talk to you about national PID infrastructure uh, strategy, the strategy for open research, and it's the view that we have from down under in Australia. So, the National Research Infrastructure Roadmap. In um, 2016, Australia put out a National Research Infrastructure Roadmap. And it was developed by an expert working group led by the uh, by Australia's chief scientist, outlining national research infrastructure. It's required over the coming decades so that Australia's world-class research system can continue to improve um, its productivity, to create jobs, to lift economic growth and support a healthy environment. And the definition there of national research infrastructure is that it comprises the nationally significant assets, facilities, and services to support leading edge research and innovation. It's accessible to publicly and privately funded users across Australia and internationally as well. So uh, there are a number of uh, national research infrastructure facilities that optimise the use of scarce resources to create uh, scale predominantly from geographically distributed and highly networked facilities and these are established through the uh, Australian Federal Government's NCRIS program, the National Collaborative Research Infrastructure Strategy and the idea behind NCRIS is to drive efficiency by reducing the duplication of facilities, equipment and skills across research institutions by focusing on national research infrastructure. It's highly collaborative, cross-disciplinary and supported by the best highly skilled technical workforce and representing international best practice. So the ADC in Research Data Commons is one of the NCRIS facilities. We are a transformational initiative that enables the Australian research community and industry access to nationally significant leading edge data intensive infrastructure platforms, skills and collections of high quality data. So our primary focus is on research data and building supporting infrastructure for data analysis and discovery. And we do this by partnering with other stakeholders in the Australian research sector. For example, through a series of open calls, we invite partners to co-invest with us in the development of critical data infrastructure, software platforms and data collections. So as part of the national information infrastructure that we have, um, the ARDC runs a number of services to support that. One is Research Data Australia, which is an online portal where anyone can go to and discover Australia's research data collections, um, but not just their collections, also um, their associated projects, the researchers uh, and institutions associated with the data sets um, and the grants associated with those and so forth. So uh, it's a major discovery portal for those things focusing on the data, the Australian data collections. We also have um, services that allow the Australian research ac uh, um, sector to access persistent identifiers, and that's uh, we will focus on those in our talk today. And we have a service called Research Vocabularies Australia, where uh, people can go and find and use controlled vocabularies that are used in research. And a lot of communities make, make, make good use of research vocabularies Australia. And you can also see that all of that infrastructure supports and, in, and helps to enable um, the concept of fair research and fair data, so findable, accessible, interoperable, reusable, which is also um, a concept that's very dear to our hearts at ARDC and something that we support through our policies and the projects that we co-invest in. So in terms of persistent identifiers as national infrastructure, so really, if we want to realise the benefit of investment in persistent identifiers, we really need national adoption 
adoption and coverage. The more that we can get um, usage of persistent identifiers uh, in the research sector, the better things can be persistently cited, the better that they can actually be linked uh, so that you can link the data with the articles, with the grants and so forth. Um, and it's really important to us that we actually have efficient national provision of these persistent identifiers. And that is why um, the, AC, uh, the ARDC invests in um, having such a wide range of identifier services available to the sector at low or no cost. Uh, the cost is on their end in terms of implementing it, but, but not uh, being hard uh, to access things like digital object identifiers, handles, IGSNs, um, and so forth. And we also think it's really important to have strategic national direction. So, um, uh, I, I, you know, for example, uh, the ARDC did put quite a lot of effort into helping to uh, initiate and set up the Australian Orchid Consortium in collaboration with AAF and a range of other stakeholders across the sector. And that was very important in identifying a common challenge that we had, which was identifying researchers persistently and linking them to their works and everybody adopting ORCID as a very common solution there. And uh, our consortium has been uh, quite successful. We've got pretty much all of uh, Australian universities, members of the Australian ORCID consortium, as well as the funding groups and uh, the CSIRO and other important players in the research landscape. So that nas strategic national direction um, with the ORCID example, but beyond that with other PIDs, and national infrastructure is really important. So here's an example of um, some of the workflows and the different identifiers that we are supporting in, in the national approach that we take. So we have RAW there listed, uh, the little icon for research organisations, um, the ORCID for people. Um, RAW also can help with the identification of funders. We have the RAID service, uh, which Siobhan gave us uh, a talk on earlier for identifying projects and things that happen during the course of the project activities, um, DOIs for grants, outputs and so forth. And these are all supporting the research workflow. So in terms of our PID service portfolio considerations, we look for a coverage of the key elements of research. So we looked at, you know, how can we support PIDs that cover those really critical things in research, so people, publications, data, sample projects, and so forth. We also look at a spectrum of technical approaches as well. So we don't just want to support one single solution or one single way of doing things, but giving people um, different um, options there to implement PIDs and different technical approaches. Also operation and facilitation is important. We really need to be able to support the, um, the PIDs that we offer. And we want, um, we also consider the attributes of good PID systems. Um, and I think Adrian might mention that when he talks through the, the PID policy. So over to you, Adrian. So in uh, 2020, so just updating, these are the two new things that we added formally as the ARDC was formed as, a, as part of that review of the infrastructure that Natasha talked about. Um, the ARDC was formed as a new organisation and we established a new persistent identifier policy as well as a roadmap. So I'll just talk you through some of those things and really the, the key thing here is just to share some of the thinking behind that as to see whether that could be um, transportable or relevant or some of the considerations could be um, relevant to your own work. <clears throat> so I'll talk about the policy next, which is on this slide. Um,
Any thoughts on doing anything about this, Natasha? Has this come up at other sessions? Yes, that seems to be the case, Adrian. It's block 12. I'll pop a note into the Slack. Okay, I'm going to them that the audio. I, I, yeah, I, I can hear you. I put something. And I've notified the support. The problem is for uh, block twelve. That the audio problem is for attendees and not for administrators and speakers. and that we've all tried refreshing. Uh, one of the helpers has asked that you do refresh, Natasha, the speakers are being asked to refresh their screens. Are we back? Can anyone hear Natasha? Hello? 
Hello, can anyone hear us? Hello. Your boy back. Yay. <laughs> wow. Okay, good. Thank you everyone for hanging in there. We're back, Adrian. We're back. Good. Yes. So um, I will go back to sharing my screen then. And we will pretend. <laughs> oh, not Adrian though. Say, say again, Adrian. Uh, can you hear me? Can you no. hear Adrian? I am speaking, but can anyone hear me? Adrian is coming back on too, says Jens. Yep, can hear Adrian, Adrian, yep. And the yeah. shirt, thank you very much. I thought that the shirt <laughs> would match nicely with the curtains. But maybe, uh... <laughs> uh, okay. Yes, we, we got zoomed off, beamed off to some other dimension. But we're back. Okay, and you're back. Uh, I have no idea what I said before, where we got up to, but anyway, I'll pretend that we're starting at this slide here. So uh, the policy was really to establish some of the uh, axiomatic things and the things that have to be done, the things that we believe in, you know, uh, as fundamental goods. The first one was just about why do, why do we have persistent identifiers? Why are we running this as part of their national infrastructure? It was really to support better research, so to support research impact, the tracking of research impact, to support research integrity so that you can find all the materials that support conclusions of research, uh, to support research innovation so that new data can be put to new purposes by um, innovative scientists, and to, research, to support efficiency so that people are spending less time copying information around the place and the identifiers are helping with that. So it's really focused in on as to, as to what the actual benefits were and why we were doing this. Um, we, it was just half a second back. I, yes, I will have to go a bit quickly because we're, do we still have another 10 minutes, Natasha, is that right? Yeah, we do, yeah. Of this session, okay. Yeah. So um, we also just wanted to state that PIDs persistent identifiers are a key component of the national and global infrastructure. And so that's something which is um, stated in our policy uh, that uh, persistent identifiers have a place in, in our infrastructure and in the global research infrastructure. Uh, one of the values that, the, that we adhere to in this policy or that we set out in the policy was that the PID services should be offered in partnership with international service providers. And that's partly because, well, that's mainly because uh, research is an international and a global in enterprise. It's global by nature. And if you want to track anything or if you want to be have innovation or integrity, we need to have global identifier systems. It's not use, no use us just having a national identifier system as part of the Australian national research infrastructure. We, uh, our, our contribution is to contribute to global systems. Um, we have made a few rules as well. And uh, those of you who heard um, Siobhan talking a little earlier will have seen that uh, we do a lot of co-investment in projects and it's a, a condition of our investment that uh, the projects and all the outputs uh, have persistent identifiers. And as I said, you know, the, the, the whole thing makes sense at global scale and so the, uh, having an Australian identifier system that would cover 2% of the world's research uh, makes no sense and we want to give our Australian researchers an advantage by making their works prominently linked into and into the global uh, research system. So on the next slide, we talk about our, so that was the policy and the other thing that we added uh, as a sort of um, part of our ongoing strategy was this uh, services roadmap. Now, Natasha talked about uh, the different portfolio of services that we offer. And uh, we went through that and thought, okay, in the next uh, five year of planning that we had, uh, which things needed to be stopped, what needed to be added to, what needed to be done differently. So I'll just walk through some of the examples there so that that will you know, help you to look at 
what was our thinking when we were uh, doing this kind of a roadmap. So on the next slide, we've got a little table that just summarizes some of the directions and the directions that look their specific ARDC directions. I don't, um, I don't, um, we're not giving this presentation to say you should do what we did, uh, but it's to share the thinking that was behind what we did. So for example, uh, we have, uh, Natasha said that we, in our discovery system in Australia, we have the all the grants that are given by all the major funding uh, bodies in Australia. And previously we had assigned pearls to those uh, and we were going to assign pearls to our own uh, investments. Uh, and then we did, as part of this review, we saw the burgeoning uh, Crossref grant ID uh, initiative, and in line with that policy, that um, we would be we would contribute to uh, and support international initiatives that we would help the frontier of persistent identifier services to become accessible to a, uh, as part of the Australian infrastructure. We said the best thing for us to do in that case is to join this grant ID. Uh, um, initiative and uh, test it out. Uh, we're um, you know one of then one of the frontier organisations uh, um, testing that out with Crossref. The other um, rows on this table to talk about the different uh, persistent identifier services that we offer ourselves. Um, Previously, we had had uh, Australian, uh, we had software systems that allowed the minting of uh, data site DOIs, but as part of the maturity of the data site um, organization itself over the last 10 years, it's uh, developed very um, robust systems in and of itself. So we discontinued, there's a, the red line there of chucking when you look at data site DOI, we discontinued our, uh, our own uh, homegrown system there for integrating with data site. Uh, but as you can see over in the blue column, we're going to move our energy and our investments uh, with uh, to the outcome and impact tracking. You know, where have these data sets been used? How are they linked to publications? How are they linked to uh, samples and other things which will give us an idea of the impact of the uh, data sets that have been identified using a data site DOI. Um, RAID, uh, you'll have seen uh, uh, also uh, that talk from Siobhan. Uh, we've established a three-year project to put this into uh, becoming a global initiative and a globally, um, Part, a global partnership. So we don't have time because of the um, sort of uh, abridged nature of today to go through all of these. But again, this is where we looked at, you know, what are good quality, what is a good quality PID system? You know, does it have a good um, set of, and the Freya project and the, quite a few of the of work that's been done at the international level had looked into saying, you know, what does governance mean in a good persistent identifier system? Uh, what, what is community buy-in? What are stable services? And that's been part of our um, the placement here. Because we probably have Jens and uh, Leslie on the call, I'll go down to the IGSN line there. Um, there's been a global review of uh, IGSN, um, the IGSN 2040 project. Um, so. We're adding that, the, the findings of the IGSN 2040, we'll be adding that into our uh, consideration for IGSN in the future. Uh, we had a, a prototype system for um, enabling researchers and research organizations to mint uh, IGSNs. We're investing in the new column there, the change. We're investing in a whole new system for uh, IGSN, and we're doing that with international collaborators. And we hope to have uh, to contribute that to the uh, community there. Um, just on uh, uh, the next slide, um, there are a few things that we do that are not operations of systems. Natasha, you just bring up that next. Yep, we've slide. got about another minute, Adrian. Yep. Yep. 
So there are a, a number of systems that we don't operate ourselves, but we are highly engaged in the support for Australian uptake. So some examples there of things that we see as highly strategic. There's not a, a necessary to have IT infrastructure here, but the infrastructure is around supporting the uptake in the Australian community and integrating them uh, into other projects for tracking or um, global initiatives. So I think we'll leave it there. Ah, that was Natasha, the picture of Natasha and I from the previous uh, Pitapalooza, back in the happy days when you could move around. <laughs> That's right. I think that was Dublin a couple of years ago.